Hey everybody, I uh, <clears throat> I wanted to take a minute and just share what is going on right now in my world in the hopes that it might help some people um, to deal with um, specifically death of a loved one, um, but also really grief in general. So it was about probably 16, 17 years ago. Um, I was a youth pastor for quite a while back between 1998 and 2000, really extended into 2005. Um, so I guess it'd be however many years that was. But um, anyways, when I started doing funerals, um, for those who don't know, I'm, I'm actually an ordained minister. Um, not that that really matters, but um, when I started, I learned from uh, my pastor at the time, Bob Richardson, who was a great, great, he was a great guy to learn from. He was a good pastor. And um, he he made a statement to me that he used to love to do funerals. And I thought, when he first said that, I thought, that's a little crazy. Um, and then I did did a, did a few funerals and I came to totally appreciate what he was talking about. Um, it's not that, you know, you like dealing with death or like, you know, the whole, the whole thing, but, but it's a great, it's a great way to help people. People are very open. Um, they're open in a way that they really aren't open any other time, you know? And, and so I just, with what's going on with me today, I just felt uh, I felt a little inspiration here to um, just make a quick, and this is going to be quick. It's not going to be that long, um, but just to do a, a quick video about dealing with death and dealing with grief. And I have found in my experience of now, you know, quite a few years, you know, not, not quite 20 years, but, you know, probably 17, 18 years, is people don't really do well with dealing with death. Um, and that's, that's in one sense, that's understandable because we don't like to deal with death. I mean, this for the last year, for goodness sake, we've been dealing with this virus that we think is going to kill us and it's killed a lot of people. Uh, there's no question about it. Um, so I don't lessen it in that sense, but I want to deal with how, how do you, cause, cause the fear of death, I believe that I believe that the fear of death is actually a God thing. And here's what I mean. God wants us to fear death only if we're not right with him. Okay. He only wants us to fear death if we're right with him. If, if you're a Christian and you're, if you claim to be a Christian and you're afraid of death, you need to really find out why. Because if you're a Christian, you should not be afraid of death. You know, um, but what I really want to hone into here is is de is grief, dealing with grief. So let me just really quickly tell you what happened. So um, my dad, uh, you may or may not know, my, my dad died in January of January 21st of 2019. So dad's been gone almost two years, which is crazy. I can't believe it's been two years. My mom died in July, had nothing to do with COVID. She just died of old age and kind of a broken heart. And that, you know, my, my mom and dad were married for almost 69 years, 68 and a half years. And mom just didn't do well without dad. Um, and so in that sense, she, you know, she missed her, the love of her life. And, um, but so how do you do, how do you deal with, the, how do you deal with grief? I, so my sister Cheryl has taken wonderfully taken care of almost all the details with my mom and dad financially and all that stuff since they weren't able to, which has been quite a long time, even before they, before they passed away. But she just handed me the final envelope. This is like the final detail, um, of really my whole mom and dad's of everything that needed to be that taken care of this is the final this is it and i was driving to meet her at the post office and and i i i still don't know why yet 
but I just, I just started thinking that this, this is it. This is the last detail, physical detail that we've had to take care of with both my mom and dad's life. And it just hit me like a truck. And this is how grief works sometimes. It's like swimming in the ocean and you get a big wave that just crashes over you. And, and the, that wave just crashed, crashed over me and I just started sobbing. I mean, just sobbing. And isn't that the way grief is? Now, um, let me encourage you, okay? And I know this is a delicate subject, but I'm kind of putting on my, I mean, I'm in the camouflage right now, but I'm kind of putting on my pastoral hat. Because I don't, I'm not in a role right now, but I'm a pastor. Okay, I love people. I I, I want to help them get closer to Jesus, and I just want to speak to those of you who who are struggling to know how to deal with grief. Okay, and this is tough. This is tough to do, um, but let me just let me just encourage you: do not ignore what you're feeling. Do not ignore it, okay? Um, I mean, and maybe I'll have to do more than one video on this because there's a lot of things to cover. But let me just let me just get to what I want to get to is my the death of my parents, the grace of God, and the, and the miracle really, the miracle and the things that God did related to my parents' death um, has been the most one of the most profound experiences of my christian life and i've been a christian since i was seven years old and i turned 55 coming up in june of this year 2021 so i ain't no spring chicken and i ain't no rookie i mean i've and i've dealt with a lot of death and so and of course i cried of course i mean a whole, whole bunch of story i could tell you hours worth of stories of how we were around mom and dad and they both died pr pretty quickly. And, um, I mean, dad, we, you know, dad did, dad died really quick. Like we put him in the hospital on a, he went in the hospital on a Saturday morning, I believe it was. Um, we knew something was off with him, but by, by Monday afternoon at three o'clock, three ten PM on the 21st of um, January, 2019, my dad took his last breath and I'll, and I'll never forget it. And, um, and, and yet, of course we cried, of course we grieved, but what I experienced, what God, I would have to say deposited in me through that experience. Most of the time when I think about my dad now, I, I have, I have a real God inspired joy. Okay. I miss them. I love them, but it is not a painful cry. It is not a painful cry. This morning was a painful cry and I can't even tell you why. Okay. I, I, I you know, ask me in another month and God may have shown me cause you know, we, we have emotions and we love to ignore them. And especially when it's something as intense and bad as death. But when you ignore those things, they don't go away. I'll never forget this from a, from a doctor, a Christian psychologist named Dr. Norman Wright. I've never forgotten this. When you bury an emotion, and some of you really need to listen to this because this, this could set you free. The truth will set you free. That's a promise Jesus made. Don't believe me. Believe Jesus. He said the truth that sets you free. But the truth will not set you free if you only have it intellectually. Okay. The truth will set you free if you open your heart by faith and you believe what God has said or is speaking to you. So the truth is not a magic bullet. Jesus said, if you hold to what I taught, then you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. And that's an ongoing work in a Christian's life. 
Okay. So if you find yourself overwhelmed with grief and it, and it may not be just related to death or to losing someone, it might be related to something else. It might be a divorce. It might be, it might be a, what's going on with one of your kids or something, but but if you have an overwhelming grief that you that you that you regularly ignore and bury here's what dr norman wright said when you bury an emotion you bury it alive when you bury an emotion you bury it alive okay now some Christians, even some people would would argue with that and disagree with that. Because I've been a Christian now for, for 40, going on 48 years. And the church, generally speaking, has a whole lot of misconceptions about emotion. Okay? Um, and so I just want to encourage you. I just want to speak a minute for those who are dealing with with overwhelming grief or sorrow, whether it's related to the death of someone or something else. If, if you ignore that thing and it's not changing, God is trying, what he's really trying to do is he's trying to get some truth in your heart. You know, we, we, we feel what we believe. Our emotions come from our heart, not our head. We can, we can govern, we can, our mind can ignore we and our mind can ignore what's going on in our heart which is your like I'm talking not your the muscle in your chest I'm talking the core of who you are the heart your heart your spiritual heart you know we we in the church we're not good at helping people deal with emotional stuff um and so I just want to I want to encourage you and let, let me say it this way. There is a promise. There is something that God would, would offer to you from his word. It's pro it's already in there. Okay. That if you would embrace it by faith, okay. If you would open your heart up to it, whatever that may be, ask the Lord, what is it? What God, what do I need here? What do I need? God does not want us to carry around a heavy burden of 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 grief okay so if 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 your grief is like i mean like carrying a, a backpack full of rocks that it, it's gonna wear you out man it's gonna wear you out there there is a promise there is i'll tell you and and I mean, I could sit here, I could sit here for hours and I am not kidding and I'm not exaggerating. I could sit here for hours and I could tell you of all of the things that the Lord has healed me from and, and how he does it is, is the truth in our hearts. David said it this way, you desire truth in our inmost being. Okay. And as a believer, we do grieve, but we don't grieve without hope. So if you're a believer and you're, you're dealing with a situation related to grief and it just is so heavy and hard, I have to ask you, where is the hope in your grief? Where is the hope in your grief? We do grieve. It doesn't, there's nothing wrong with crying. I mean, today, I mean, who would have, who would have known? My, my sister hands me you know, and I'm not, it, it doesn't matter what it is. It's not important for this, but my, this is the last detail she needed to give to each of us kids related to my dad. And, and, and while I'm driving up there, it just, it hits me and I start sobbing the, the, and I forget if I said this, forgive me, I'm over 50 now. Grieving is like swimming in the ocean. I said it and waves just crash over you. I don't know why I started sobbing. I don't know why. But I know what to do with it, and I know where to go with it, and I know to not carry this stuff. And I, I mean, I've I've come to the place in my life where, as as best as I'm given the grace to do it, I live my life honestly before God because He knows everything, anyways. 
So why would you try to hide something from somebody who knows everything? It's actually foolish when you think about it. It's foolish. But we do it all the time as Christians. So I just I just throw that out there. Jesus can bring peace to any internal storm. And I'm telling you that from experience. He can bring peace to any internal storm if you will let him. And if you will offer him that grief and you will ask him for what you need. I mean, you can even ask that, Lord, well, I need peace. I need peace here. And it doesn't mean you won't grieve, but there should be hope. Should be hope. So that's to my Christians. And then one, one I want to um, just, I want to end this with talking to anybody who's watching this. You may not be a Christian. Okay. If you're not a Christian and you're afraid of death, you should be. You should be afraid of death. Because Jesus holds the key of how of death and the grave. Okay? And the fear of death for you as a non-believer is actually a gift. And the intent of that gift is to drive you to Jesus. To drive you to the cross. To recognize that you're a sinner just like I was. And you need forgiveness just like I needed it. And you need to repent, which means to change your thinking, change your mind. Because most of the time, the reason why we don't open our heart in simple faith and receive salvation is because of our reasoning and our excuses and our this and our that and all this. And if, I mean, if you're, if, I don't know, I mean, I don't know what you do to deal with pain or grief. I don't know. People do all kinds of stuff, drink and dope and sleep around and and I mean, if you want to live that way, you can live that way. You can live that way, but you don't have to. And, and I pray this would be an opportunity for you to turn to the Lord and, and salvation. We don't get saved to avoid problems. We get saved because we're all sinners and we need to be forgiven. But one of the perks and benefits of coming to Christ is he, he's with you in every situation and every storm. So if that's you and you're afraid of death and you're struggling with the loss of someone or whatever it may be, whatever kind of grief it may be, you don't have to live in it. But but you need to come to Christ. You need to, I mean you come to Christ because we're sinners, not to fix our problems. But a perk, a benefit of coming to Christ is he continues to work in our lives. So there's I, I hope that helps somebody. Uh, I, I leave you with, and I'm doing this off the cuff, and I my phone's right in front of me, and I don't want to take the, I think it's Matthew 11. I think it's Matthew 11, the end of the chapter, where Jesus said, Come to me, all who you are weary and burdened. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from him, and he will give you rest. He will lift that burden of grief, and he will help you to find peace. Jesus can give you peace in any storm that life or Satan or even your own actions have brought to you. He can bring you peace. So God bless you. I hope that helps. And if I can help, I'm glad to help you. So God bless and have an awesome day filled with peace.